how do we keep our students thinking for the majority of our lesson, our lesson plan, our, our, our time with our students, um, but also uh, still cover the curriculum? We, we've got these we, tasks, we've got these new ideas, we want to get our students up, we got to get our students thinking on a regular basis, but then we sometimes think that we can't incorporate practice enough to cover all the curriculum we need to cover. In this video, we are going to talk about how to do that and what resources you need to make that happen. Let's go. Hey there, Math Moment Makers. John here from Make Math Moments. And if you have not yet subscribed to this YouTube channel, make sure that you do because we're putting out uh, uh, videos each and every week to help you in the classroom make math moments for your students. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna talk about a, a really big idea that uh, we try to make sure that we think about as, as always or as much as we can. That idea is, is this idea of balance and, and the idea of like, I, I want to get my students thinking. I do need to cover the curriculum. I do want them to have procedural fluency and, and get the practice they need, but how do I do all of that during the lesson time that I have? And we want to talk about that here in this video and what you can be doing to kind of mold those two ideas together or those three ideas together. And to kind of kind of uh, talk about this, I want to bring up uh, a, a book that uh, I, I, I bought for my wife uh, when we were dating and it's called The Dot in the Line. It's a it's it's an old it's an old story and actually in the 60s they made a, a movie. Uh, Chuck Jones made a movie about this that actually won an Academy Award, like a, a, an animated short. Uh, let me just uh, talk to you a little bit about what the dot in the line is about and then how that relates to math class and how to create balance for you. All right, so here here's the cover of the dot in the line and it's it's a very it's a, it's a very heartwarming story and it hit home for me. Um, the, the subtitle of the dot in the line is, is, is a ro romance in lower mathematics. Let me just give you a synopsis of the story. So um, the, the main character of this story is the line and the line is hopelessly in love with a dot, um, this, uh, this, this circle. And uh, it wants, you know, it wants to be with that dot. Um, but the dot is in love with someone else and the dot is in love with a squiggle. I'm in love with the squiggle because the squiggle is carefree, uh, whereas the line is very rigid. And the story is about the the pursuit of the line trying to win over the affections of the circle. Uh, but the circle, as I said, is is in love with the carefreeness, the whimsicalness of the squiggle. And so the the line you know status you know, is is frustrated with this and in the line is saying look i'm 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 dependable uh i i, I got dignity uh i i am so strong i'm a very straight and arrow why don't you like me why don't you like me uh, dot. Uh, then it thinks the dot is very perfect and puts it on a, pedi a pendulum. Um, and then the line keeps thinking about how, how strong it is. And, and it doesn't want to think about changing into a squiggle. A squiggle is so nonsensical. The squiggle, the line views as too, too kind of uh, not reliable like a line might be. Um, and so it gives up. It gives up for, for a while. And then what in its moments of giving up, the line, mine, the, the line makes a realization, which is the most important part of, of the book here, is that it doesn't need to change uh, to be the squiggle. It, it doesn't need to, it doesn't need to say, I'm only the line and I'm nothing else. The line actually tries hard and creates a bend. The line creates one small little bend, which then leads to more bends. And the line starts to realize this about himself and creates so many bends that starts to realize that I can create such amazing things out of a straight line and I can create all these bends. And so sets off to learn about how to create more and more bends for himself. Um, creates some very, very interesting and beautiful ideas and, and pictures and can show that it can do as many great things that the squiggle could do, but better. Um, and so joins back up and confronts the duo um, and, and tempts 
the dot back uh, and, and challenges the, the squiggle to try to match this mysteriousness and his cleverness and his profoundness that a line can do or the complexity uh, or the eloquent uh, and how versatile it could be or compelling the line could be by bending. Um, the squeal can't, can't match any of that. And uh, the dot sees all that great stuff that the line has now newfound confidence and joins up with the line. And in the end, the dot does fall in love with the line because of this newfound confidence it has. And I, I'm often, I often think about this um, not as a love story itself, which it is, um, this is why I gave it to my wife, but I think of it mostly in terms of our mathematical teaching and thinking about this idea of balance, because I know that for a long time, and, and this is very tempting out there, is that you're always in the pursuit of the of the best possible lesson. You know, you want this great lesson. And sometimes you see on the internet uh, or in, in social media, or maybe down the hallway uh, or at the lunch table, someone else, another teacher is doing something different. And you're hearing about all this fun stuff or amazing lessons or great engagement their students are having. And you're wishing that I'm not like that exactly, or I, I don't have that in my class and I want to be like that. And sometimes you think that in math class, we need to be like the line. We need to be this like rigorous, this, this rigorous uh, mathematical class because we want to teach our students to be problem solvers and we want great thinking and we have to make sure we, we have all of these things in place. And I, I thought this way for a, a very long time. Um, whereas I thought, hey, the fun stuff happens in other classes and it might happen in other math classes, but that's like the squiggle. That's like this whimsical teaching that we're going to do some things. The kids are going to love us, but we're actually not going to help them that much in mathematics. I've, there's this dichotomy right here that we think we have to be the line or, we can, or we're can, or we going to be the squiggle. We can't really do both. Uh, we can't really great, get great thinking and cover the curriculum at the exact same time. Um, we have to make sure that we are hard nosed to get stuff done like the line might be uh, to cover the curriculum. We can't be doing problem based lessons in our classroom uh, or we can't be, you know, investigating and discovery type learning. That's like what the squiggle would do because we can't cover the curriculum in that way. And it's we need to do what the line does. We, we need to realize that we can make a small bend in that bend doesn't mean we're giving up the rigorousness of our math class. It, it means that we might have to work a little harder. We might have to work a little smarter and, and the, in the bending is allowing us to, to take this piece over here and embed it with this piece over here so that we can reach all of our students, but at the same time, get our students thinking, cover the curriculum and help them with what they need to develop that procedural fluency. And so uh, we, we've said in the past that many, many teachers think that pro teaching through problem-based lessons or some teachers think teaching through problem-based lessons uh, is that whimsical teaching because we don't have time to cover all that curriculum. Uh, we just wanted to point out here that one thing that we make sure that we do in our class to make sure that we are kind of bending like the line is bending. You can see here in the Olympics unit, it is a five day unit and we consciously embed purposeful practice into these units because we know that we need to get our students thinking and that's what maybe a day one might look like. You can look at our guides on how to implement a day one and what are the uh, things to say, what are the resources you're going to need on a day one, but many of our day twos and our day fours and some of the other days uh, in, embed this idea of this purposeful practice. And and so you can look at the guides, but many of these include a math talk, uh, which is like kind of a minds on activity. And then there's purposeful practice that's related to that particular task. And so those are embedded right into those, those, those problems. So thinking about the line is how do I cover my curriculum and teach through problem solving is, is that we can teach and introduce ideas through problem solving and then embed this purposeful practice inside those lessons. Um, many of us think that we have to, we, we would teach the lesson and then we're going to use a, we're going to use this, this 
problem-based lesson to see what the kids can do. And if you do it that way, you, you may run out of time. We actually use these problem-based lessons to introduce all topics and then use purposeful practice after um, to get our students going on and practicing and getting that procedural fluency that they need. Uh, so that's the bend. We we're creating bends to make and blend those two together. And there's lots of different ways you can bend your class, uh, bend your teaching so that you are meeting the needs of kids. Uh, here is, I've, I've, down below the link, so right around this video somewhere, there's some links. Um, and in those links, you can grab uh, five other practice structures that we use in our classrooms to embed and, and, and get our students engaged while doing practice. And, and it doesn't kind of take up more time than needed. So there's five different ways that we do that. You can read about those uh, in the links below and, and get that, that handout right there. So I'm curious how you also uh, embed practice into your lessons um, and also cover the curriculum and also get students thinking all of those things we're doing on a regular basis through these techniques. So how are you doing that in your class? Let us know in the comments below. Other than that, hey, I'd love to see you next week in our next video, um, and we'll uh, we'll talk then. Take care.